Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend. We will be kicking off today with a couple of news stories. The first concerning NVIDIA trying to pull a switcheroo with their mobile graphics chips and not actually telling anyone about it. And also Far Cry 5, which has now been released. We'll be discussing some of the initial performance numbers on that and also how they are achieving such good performance in their PC version of the game. But first, I want to let you guys know that today's video is being brought to you by the Joker Productions Spreadshirt Shop, where you can pick up the Make AMD Great Again shirt or the NVIDIA GIMP Works one, or maybe even the new JP Circuit logo design on a coffee mug or a t-shirt, whatever happens to be your preference. But as I said, we're going to be kicking off today with NVIDIA yet again after the whole debacle that's been going on in the past week or two concerning the GeForce Partner Program, it looks like NVIDIA is stepping in shit once again with their MX150 lineup of mobile graphics processors and not letting anyone know that they've actually pushed out a slower, lower power version of that chip for Ultrabooks, which on paper would kind of make sense if they're going for Ultrabooks, that they need a lower TDP part, and as a consequence, it could be a little bit slower, because as you know, in an Ultrabook, it's a much smaller space, so you need to have uh, keep try to keep temperatures down as much as possible, but typically, you would think that they would let people know about it. So this has actually been showing up in quite a different, uh, sorry, quite a few different OEMs, uh, laptops, or Ultrabooks, really, I should say. This story is coming to us courtesy of Anantech, who have reported on this after Notebook Check had found that several of their different Lenovo ThinkPad variants that they were testing were actually running a bit slower and showing up with a different hardware ID when looking inside GPU-Z. If you look here on the side-by-side -side comparison with the two screenshots, you can see in the middle here one denotes a 1D10 model, which is the original, and the newer one is 1D12. Now, what this really ends up equating down to is them getting about 20 to 25 percent less performance when running on 3D Mark. You can see that Notebook Check had set a clock speed difference of 36% for the base on the GPU, 17% for the memory, and 32% for the boost. And Lenovo are not the only ones. After they had looked into it, they found ones from Dell, Asus, and Xiaomi, I believe was the other one. Uh, so quite a few different OEM manufacturers are actually having this issue right now where they are selling these notebooks to the public but no one is knowing that they're actually buying a lower class part or lower class GPU. If you come over onto the ThinkPad page and look at the tech specs when we come down here, you could just see it says an NVIDIA GeForce MX150 2GB variant. And that's the same for both of these different ones that they have listed on here. So there's nothing denoting that this is a different lower power part. It's just... It, they're just not telling anyone, which is pretty darn messed up of NVIDIA not to be doing. Now, we could theorize that maybe it's just Lenovo, but as I said, it's quite a few different brands here, so it kind of seems like the problem might be at the source. Maybe NVIDIA and these OEMs are kind of collaborating on it, and they both are not being as transparent as they should about the hardware that's being used in these laptops. But when NVIDIA was, you know, reached out to by Anantech to see if that they would comment on this, they just pretty much shut it down. They wouldn't say anything about it, just kind of like the GeForce Partner program all over again. So it seems like NVIDIA right now, this past month, has a serious problem in terms of its transparency. And this more or less, this, this reminded me of the, uh, the GTX 970 scandal all over again with the three and a half gigabytes of VRAM on the cards rather than the four gigabytes as advertised on the box. So let me know what you think about the NVIDIA switcheroo down in the comments below as I do look forward to your guys' opinions on this story right here. And we're going to go roll ahead into our next one now, which is on Far Cry 5, which will be releasing tomorrow for the PC, PS4, and Xbox. And I will definitely be doing some testing on it, although some of the initial performance numbers are actually looking quite good. And I do have some numbers that I can show you from AMD that they did internally that I've had for a few days now, but NDAs have li lifted as of tomorrow, as of this morning so now we can just kind of start to talk about it but before we do that i wanted to mention this article over on oc3d.net where they were talking about the use of floating point 16 compute in far cry 5 which is actually helping it get some really good performance especially on vega gpus which use a feature called rapid packed math which replaces a single 
floating point 32 calculation with two floating point 16 calculations, doubling the mathematical throughput for floating point 16 workloads. And this is being used in certain parts of the game where async computers support it, like on water simulation. And this is just helping deliver much better performance overall in Far Cry 5 and is probably going to give AMD a slight edge in terms of performance, especially when looking at the Vega graphics cards that can take advantage of the rapid packed math technology on those GPUs. And there have been quite a few videos that have gone up so far um, and articles as well talking about performance. Guru3D had posted a video where they had uh, running on a Titan X Pascal at 4K ultra maxed out and the game was running around 40s, 50s and into the 60s sometimes. But overall, the optimization on the game does seem to be pretty well. I would say better than previous Far Cry games, which have had a history, at least for me, in my experience, of not running amazing on the PC and just, um, just yeah, just having quite a few performance issues. But usually they do get better with drivers over time. But at launch, they haven't had the smoothest launches, at least, like I said, in my experience on testing those games. But it looks like Ubisoft have all of their ducks in a row for this release. As we can look over here on these internal numbers, once again, these are from AMD. They were running on an i7 7700K at four gigahertz for their GPU testing, which went out with the Far Cry 5 benchmarking guide that I got over the weekend. And you can see here at 1440p, we've got Vega 64, GTX 1080, Vega 56, quite a few different GPUs here run at low, normal, high, and ultra at 1440p. And you can see Vega 64 maxed out is getting 89 FPS. GTX 1080 is getting 81 FPS. So Vega 64 is edging out there by eight FPS. Vega 56 running at the same as the 1070 Ti, although it is beating the GTX 1070 and the RX 580 does edge out the GTX 1060 as well, although by a smaller margin than what we're seeing on Vega 64 versus the 1080 and that could likely have something to do with the fact that they have the racket, the rapid packed math on those Vega GPUs. And over here, 4K as well, I'll show you these benchmarks here. You can see none of these cards are averaging 60 FPS maxed out. I mean, even at high settings, you're looking at averages down in the high 40s on something like Vega 64. Maybe once we get a 1080 Ti in, we could test that at like high settings and see what it's able to do for you guys. And uh, we'll see how it really runs. But at 4K, you're looking at having to run it at low really on Vega 64, which runs at the best, to get an average of 60 frames per second. So it looks like if you're wanting to play at 4K, you might want to look into SLI or a higher powered GPU. But according to AMD as well in this post, it looks like SLI and crossfire scaling should be pretty decent with AMD on their Vega 56 cards reporting about 1.8% scaling on these uh, on a crossfire with this game or 1.8 x i should say not percent and then on the 1070 ti's they show here once again with nvidia this is about 1.6 x so 1.6 times the performance that you would expect on a single gpu and rx 580s once again crossfire getting about 1.8 x scaling which is actually pretty darn good you never really expect to see full 100 percent scaling in a game with SLI or Crossfire, but 1.6 for NVIDIA, 1.8 for AMD seems pretty good. But, you know, at the end of the day, once again, it, like I said, AMD uh, appears to be running the game a little bit better as it seems they've had some more time to kind of optimize the game and be able to take advantage of the floating point 16 um, technology that they have on the game engine. So that's all good news to see all of that. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below if you're going to be picking up Far Cry 5. As I said, I'm going to be preloading it probably later. I usually don't pre-order games, but I'll... I'll buy them like a day ahead of time or whatever, just so I can kind of have it preloaded, which I guess is technically pre-ordering, although I'm not a big fan of pre-order culture and the bonuses and all that stuff behind it. So it is what it is. Let me know down in the comments, like I said, if you're picking up Far Cry 5, your thoughts on the NVIDIA switcheroo once again. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video or learned something new, don't forget to leave a like on it down below and subscribe if you're not already. And I will catch you guys tomorrow for another video. Turn.